Look around the room and see who's with you today. Allow for your heart to open and embrace all of these sweet beings. As our choir is finding their seats, uh, just, just embrace these sweet beings that are all around you. Expand your awareness and embrace the beings who are streaming in from around the globe. And allow them to be a part of your, your, your consciousness, that all of these people are in the field of your awareness. Now look at the beings sitting right next to you. Any one of them, they're both pretty. They're both <laughs> handsome. They, they, they don't look like anybody else in the world. Just look at that being and say, my, my, my. There is such beauty in you. There is such power in you. There's a glow all about you. That glow is God. That glow is love. That glow is intelligence. That glow is spiritual power. That glow is you. And you have come to set it free to make a mighty difference on this planet and to help change the world for the better. Let's be about this together in the here and now, and so it is. Give up the love with each other. You know how to do it. Hug, handshake, sweet glance. And be aware that the holy field that has been created by your intentionality, by the prayers, the affirmations, the meditation, the sacred sound of agape, the field has been created so that you can be more aware of who and what you are and whose you belong to. You belong to a presence that is never an absence that wants to know itself as your very life into being. And as we have uh, talked about this month to wrap up this particular theme of pulled by vision, we have embraced the 29th uh, chapter, 18th verse of Proverbs that states in substance that without vision, the people perish. So somewhere in your soul, you are pulled by a vision of such beauty and such service and such love and compassion, such excellence, uh, that every single day as you embrace this, it's pulling you to levels of greatness that you didn't know was even within you that you're not being pushed and pulled by the vicissitudes of the world. You're being pulled by a vision that allows you to be impervious to the thought forms that move through the human experience that would pull you down in fear and doubt and worry and lack and limitation and the scarcity, all of those thought forms which run through the human experience that seem so real. You are here because something within you is pulling you to a higher vision of what is locked and low within your very soul. I'm thinking about something right now. I'm looking over at our supervisor, Mark Ridley Thomas, who I didn't have an opportunity to introduce earlier, pulled by a vision of such excellence in our community. Give him some love, please. He's with his son, Sebastian. God bless you, Mark, for being here today. And so somewhere along the line, you're embracing that you're pulled by a vision so that when you're waking up in the morning, you're asking for your assignment. You literally ask for your assignment in the field of gratitude and thanksgiving and appreciation, and then you humbly ask for help to complete your assignment. So throughout the course of the day, you're not walking uh, uh, in a sense of loneliness. You're walking at one with the presence of God that is fueling your intention, fueling your entire being, that at the end of the day, you are more than you were when you started out at the beginning of the day, for you have allowed the presence of God all mighty, all beauty, and all joy, and all intelligence to take over your life. We have talked about this particular month as we moved through the Youth Sunday, that in order to embrace this uh, dynamic vision, we have to maintain our childlike nature of wonder and awe. It takes spiritual practice to do this, because as you matriculate through earth school, things get very serious. We're taught to be serious. Uh, we're taught that we live in a hard, cruel world. We're taught that there are bad things out there. And sometimes we're taught more to, what to fear than what to love, more to fear than the embracing of that power that's within us. And the moment we get as serious, uh, and then we begin to see obstacles and hindrances, and something happens, uh, and we begin to see more obstacles and hindrances than vision. But when you were a child, all you had was that wonder and all. 
The possibilities loom large in your life. Your imagination was fired up with so much good that you didn't see an obstacle. All you saw was an end result moving through your soul. In order to be pulled by this dynamic vision, we want to come back to that childlike nature. Be aware, I did not say childish, I said childlike. Those are not the same thing. We're talking about a wonder and an awe and an availability, that which allows us to see vision more than obstacle. When we contract and see obstacle, we are prone to coercion and manipulation to get things done. When we're in wonder and awe, we're prone to living in a field of infinite possibilities that allows for the Spirit of God to be the activity of our awareness and by law of consciousness, Things seem to move in place for us in a way that we could not manipulate ourselves, that we could not coerce ourselves for this presence, which is never an absence, has everything in it, all of creation. This is why we teach that God is not simply in all creation. All creation is in God, for God is infinite. So the moment we're available at that level, then all creation comes under the aegis of the sacred law and moves according to the pattern that is within you being pulled by a dynamic vision. Say with me if you will right now, I'm pulled by a vision of possibility. I'm pulled by a vision of excellence, I'm by a vision of excellence. Beauty. beauty, elegance, elegance. Harmonizing, prosperity. harmonizing prosperity, wealth and abundance, wealth and abundance. Divine, spiritual power. divine spiritual power. I'm pulled by a vision of excellence. I'm pulled by a vision of excellence. I want you to say it again, but I want you to really say it and mean it. I'm pulled by a vision of excellence. There it is right there. That timber, that dynamic, that feeling tone is the tonal quality that's allowing the great God of the universe and its universal law to wrap around that feeling. So if you, even if you don't know what it is, that feeling will outpicture itself as paths opening, doors opening, ways being made out of no way because of the feeling tone that you are carrying. And then we come to an understanding today that you must become the star of your own show. You must become the star of your own show. Do you realize that unwittingly you are starring in other people's shows? Other people have you as props, other people you have you as particular roles, some villain, some hero, some whatever their imagination would have you. They, they, you are starring in their shows and you don't even know it. And sometimes you inadvertently come under the aegis of their show by asking the question, I wonder what they're thinking about me. Now, the moment you walk and you begin to wonder what other people are thinking about you, you come under the frequency and the vibration of their show and how you're starring in it. That's not for you. Your role is to ask, what is God seeing as me? What role does God have for me in, the, in this world? If, the, if you're starring as a hero in somebody's life, then you'll come to an understanding that those that deify you will ultimately crucify you. If you're starring as a, as a villain, you'll be pulled into, pulled into the suck hole and the quicksand of their thoughts around you. You must star in your own show. You must stand in the awareness of being so impervious uh, to what the world thinks about you if your color of your skin is black. If the, what the world might be thinking about you, and not the world, because most of the world is black. I mean this nation. <laughs> what, what the world might be thinking about you if you're gay or whatever. What the world might be thinking about you if you're Mexican or if you're trying to cross a border to save your life and the family and your lives of your family. You must come to an awareness that there is an idea held in the mind of the infinite that's impervious to time, has no shelf life. And as you begin to open yourself up uh, to this, you will star in your own program. 
the program that's imprinted in your heart and your soul of which time and space can never erase and so that you will walk in the world having your dynamic relationship be with the presence of God first and foremost with the presence of love and beauty first and foremost, the presence of peace and beauty first and foremost. And then you will mature in your loving, as we talked about in the early meditation service. You will begin to understand that as you open yourself up and you ask the question or open yourself up to, uh, to loving to love. Just, I love to love. Say that with me, I love to love. Now that particular statement, that particular stage of consciousness is a very high state of consciousness because most people need an object to love. Send me someone to love. Let me have a companion. They, they operate at a level in which they have to have an object to love. Therefore, they're at the level of objectifying people with their love, not you. In order to rise out of the roles that other people are playing for you or are running in their mind about you, you don't ever ask what anybody is thinking. And then you say, assist me in loving to love. And the moment you love to love with no object, you sneak up on the agendaless. You sneak up on the unconditional. You sneak up on the all-conditional love of God you become a dynamic field of love, and then the presence brings into your field that which you are to love. Didn't say like, that which you are to love. And so oftentimes uh, you'll find yourself with individuals uh, that you don't like. They're on the bus with you, they're on the train with you, on the freeway with you. They're, they're wherever they are. And you'll, 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 you'll elevate your awareness. I just want to love. And then without an object, this activity will become the activity of your awareness. Uh, and you will not inhibit the love of God from flowing uh, because you're not objectifying anyone. You're just an avenue of loving. And then the universal presence brings into that atmosphere more for you to love. In this instant, as I am speaking, put your attention on your own heart, not anybody else's heart, your own heart space, and begin to feel the pulsing of a dynamic love emanating through you. Notice that this loving presence that is within you, if you're willing, does not need an object. It's just love. It's just the total givingness of itself without any inhibition whatsoever. Notice uh, that you can now expand this loving presence, and I want you to expand the loving presence to everyone here in the sanctuary, everyone in the balcony, everyone that's love streaming and on the Facebook Live technology. Notice uh, that they're in your field of awareness uh, that, that just like God is not just merely in the creation, but everything is in the field of God, that you as a spiritual being, the light that lights up every man and every woman that cometh into the world, a field of divine love, beauty, intelligence, uh, that all of this is in you. It's an optical illusion that it's outside of you. It's actually in your field of awareness, and the reason you can't see it is because your body identified and you're circumscribed to your sensorium, the five senses, so you project all that was within here out there. But as a spiritual, uh, as a spiritual adept, you're now expanding your awareness so that you can begin to feel that all of this is within you. All of these beings in this sanctuary within your field of love and beauty and intelligence expanded once again and be aware of all of the beings that have been adversely hurt by the fires, adversely hurt by the shootings in our nation. They're in the field of your awareness right now. You don't have to know them personally. But in this field of awareness, this magnificent agendaless love is now touching the core of the being of these beings expanded to the United States beyond red and blue expanded and begin to feel a dynamic level of love for every being every species in our country expanded to the globe in this instant and be aware 
that as they used to say in the old church, God has the whole world in his hands. God has the whole world in his hands through us right now. Heal into this. And say in substance, I just love to love. <laughs> now, as you expand yourself into that consciousness, here's the power that you gain. No one can stop that. No one can hinder that. All they can do is create tributaries. What do I mean? If someone hates you and you say, I love to love, then the tributary that comes up might be forgiveness. But they can't stop you from loving. If, if someone talks about you, they can't, they can't stop you from loving. They, 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 it, may, it may create a tributary called compassion. It may create a tributary called generosity or kindness. But when you open up to loving to love, you have the power of God, and no one can prevent that at all. Expand your awareness. The whole planet is in your awareness right now. And there is nothing, not even a president, that can keep you from loving now. Nobody has the power. Now, let's roll through this. I hear you, Carl. Be brief, brother. Be brief. I hear you. Listen. You're pulled by a vision of excellence. Without vision, you perish. Without vision, uh, there is a, a waffling. Without vision, there's lack of courage. Without vision, there's just a, a meandering around. Without vision, there's high confusion. With vision, uh, people do not perish. They rise beyond their wildest imaginings. Uh, we e elevate ourselves uh, to the level of the child. You must be a child to enter into the kingdom of heaven, which is expanding good, not childish, childlike wonder, awe, glee, Possibility, more possibility than obstacle, more possibility than hindrance, no manipulation, no coercion. The field of infinite possibility is being activated because my consciousness is expanded to, oh my good God, what good is going to happen today? That's the question you hang out in. What good is going to happen today? What greatness is going to come by my way today? What opportunities are going to come here today? What possibility? Abilities are going to unfold today. You hang out in that dynamic. This is practice because it's hard. If it wasn't hard, you wouldn't have to practice. It is, it is hard. That's for why you got to practice. And then you become aware that you must be the star of your own program, of your own show. You've been warned that you've been starring in other people's shows. Props. Villains, heroes, secondary operational actors. God doesn't make any of that. And so you wake up every day and you say, the light that lights up every man and every woman that comes into the world, it's the light of my own life. I project from this life, light across the screen of my mind excellence and the beauty and poise and confidence and prosperity, I project it from the vision that is pulling me. So I never ask, what role am I playing in someone else's life? I ask, what role am I to be as the life of God? And then, I just love to love. And then the power is here. Because no one has the power to stop you from loving, from peacing, from joying, from giving, from creating. No one. No one. So you stand in power. Everyone, please rise. Those who can rise. Expand your awareness. Open up your hands. You can, if you touch each other, it's okay. It's a love touch. Just open up that heart space again. Put your attention on the heart space. Remember, remember here, you have not only this congregation and all of the beings that are, that are love streaming from around the world, you have the whole world in your consciousness. The entire planet is in your awareness right now. This is quantum. This is mysticism. Same thing. Quantum reality. Consciousness is everywhere simultaneously. Mysticism, the presence that's never an absence, is everywhere in its fullness. And all of that is a dimension of our consciousness. 
So we have the whole planet in our awareness. We can go into the solar system and the cosmos. We can go into cosmic consciousness. You can. Now, we hear this quantum statement as espoused through Yeshua ben Joseph, otherwise known as Jesus, the Christ, where he said, as I am lifted up, I draw all unto me. So we feel connected with everyone at the core level, not the personality level. And we say, I am lifted up. I draw all unto this vibration. I am lifted up. I draw all under the vibration of peace. I draw all under the vibration of love. I draw all under the vibration of abundance. Health and healing. Wealth and well-being. Divine creativity. I draw all unto this high frequency. All of my needs are met. I am starring in my own show. Produced and directed by God intelligence. I am starring in my own show. Produced and directed by God, love, intelligence. Take a breath here. Suspend the breath at the apex and just feel what you've just said. You're not starring in anybody else's show. You're rising up as a divine light, being lifted up, and instead of being pulled down by, by the world, you're rising up in the feeling tone of your oneness with God and drawing everyone else with you, released with the sound of ah. Your arms might be getting a little tired. <laughs> Just bring them down to your side. And say, I'm willing to wake up, to, wake up. to the glorious nature of my being. My main relating is with the presence that is never an absence. It infuses, it infuses all my relationships with that which is eternal and timeless. Strengthens my ability to love. I love to love. I love to love. I love to love. And no one can stop it. All of my needs are met. That's the way it is. Somebody shout about it. Now you may take your seat and be aware that we have moved through a month's theme of being pulled by vision. We've come to an understanding about the worlds that we live in, that the world and the planet is not the same thing, that people live in different worlds based on their perception, and that what we're doing in spiritual community is opening ourselves up to spiritual insight so that our perception expands and we begin to see new worlds, worlds without end in front of us. Context determines perception. Our context in a spiritual teaching such as this is that we live, move, and have our beingness in God. That context expands our perception so that we begin to see differently. We come out from under the aegis of living, moving, and having our beingness in the thought form that we're merely our son and daughter of our parents, that we're merely born, we're merely born in a particular place in the United States or around the world or whatever school we went to. That is not our context. Our context is that we're living, moving, and having our beingness in God. This is why you pray. This is why you meditate to expand your context and have insight your perception expands, your world changes. You come out of being a victim because you've come out of that world. You're not in that world anymore. The little chicken in the egg may go into victim consciousness. Oh, my house is too small. I don't have enough food. I'm polluting the environment. But it breaks through and comes into a different world. You're here to come to a different world through spiritual practice. It's hard. That's why we practice. 
so that we can break free and begin to see differently. And then our mouth matches our vision. And if we're speaking and if what we're saying doesn't match the vision of our life, then in fact we're out of integrity with our soul and we are malpracticing using the law incorrectly. We catch ourselves, we become quiet, and that which comes out of our mouth is vision, possibility. And breathe. Release. Come into the quiet with me. Come to the depth of the quiet with me. Mm. We begin to watch the waves of the surface mind begin to give way to our oceanic being. The stillness, the timeless, the eternal presence that is everywhere in its fullness and everything moves in it as it is already everywhere. We begin to feel a deep sense of gratitude for just being alive. Just being awake. willing now to be a star in your own program, your own show, produced and directed by God Intelligence. You're not considering how you might be starring in someone else's mind. No. an expression of divine mind. You're rising up. And you're loving the love. Oh my God. It is here in this awareness from the sacred silence, the quietude, the perfect presence, the stillness, embracing the light that is our very being, the luminous that is our very being, the numinous that is our very being, we rise up in this awareness. In glee and gratitude take over, we give it permission to do so. Such thanksgiving. That the recognition of the presence and the power and the love becomes so acute that we cannot help but see God everywhere. The invisible hands of God everywhere. The, the loving, creative nature of the presence everywhere. We cannot help but see it now. Where we were blind, now we see. And with such deep connectivity, I am what thou art, and thou art what I am. That vibration takes over. And the word that is spoken from this expanded space is truly a law unto itself that only knows its own fulfillment does not tarry with yesterday, obstacles, fear, worry. It only knows itself. I speak that word for each of us today. Knowing that divine freedom and spiritual liberation is the order of our day. Knowing that divine wholeness and wellness and well-being reign supreme. 
Oh, we consider our body temple. It's so magnificently made. Every organ action function of the body temple is now coming back to its celestial wholeness. That is, the celestial body is now infusing every organ and action and function of our body temple. That wholeness and wellness and beauty and well-being reign supreme in our life right now. Our mind, which is an expression of divine mind, there is clarity. There's purity with the emotional body and there's divine order and elegance and beauty in all the rest of our bodies. The subtle bodies, the bodies of our affairs. Order, harmony, beauty, and love. So much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much. Take a deep breath and release the sound of ah. Take a deep and pure breath and let this breath be a sign. When you release it, let it be a sign of relief. Like, oh my God, I'm here where I've always wanted to be. In breathe, let go. So whatever trouble waters you might be walking through right now, you're at the end now. Vibrationally, you're at the end. You're at the end vibrationally. And by law, it'll pull you through. My law will pull you through. And breathe. Release. Ah, sign of release, sign of release. As we enter into a pact that we have with the individuals who are called in for prayer, there'll first be a, a feeling tone that will assist you. And then we're going to have a pact and embrace these beings who are asking for our help. They're part of the field of consciousness, and we're going to pray for them. We're going to pray.
catch the feeling tone. Divine light and luminosity. 